I'm so excited. If you don't know, I've been traveling around Europe and the US for the last couple of months. And today I am just gonna start diving right into all the things and the perspectives that I have gained over the last couple of months. If you're not subscribed and you're not part of the channel, definitely subscribe below because there's a lot of great videos coming. And today we're gonna to talk about how New Zealand has changed me. I think that now that I've traveled a lot and spent a lot of time in the US, I have a very different perspective on how New Zealand has changed me. You're gonna to wanna to watch this whole video, it's very good, and here we go. If you don't know us, we're a family of six that have moved from the US to New Zealand and have been in New Zealand for eight years and share the journey. I mainly just kind of share my perspective and what I've learned. If you are traveling, if you are moving, if you're doing a working holiday visa or coming to New Zealand, definitely reach out. I have lots of services to help you get, you know, the, your best foot on the ground when you get here and I'm, I'm here to help you. Just, just know that I'm here for you and reach out. And all my Kiwis out there, I don't know if you're aware, but I have a e-cookbook. So it's just like an electronic cookbook that shows you some of the best US recipes and how to make them with New Zealand and Australian ingredients. And so definitely check out the description below because that is a really cool resource that I just recently found out that a lot of people didn't know that I had and I have been selling a lot now that they're a little bit more aware. So it's not expensive, it's there for you and it's so great. I mean, the Philly cheese steak, the Chicago style pizza, it's all in there for you. All right, number one, how New Zealand has changed me. So many things, so many things that I'm probably not gonna cover everything, but, and this isn't gonna apply to everybody and you might not agree with everything, but this is just my perspective. So there, that's the disclaimer. So first, number one, less aggressive. <laughs> if you knew me in the States, I was definitely aggressive. And it, I was aggressive because in the States, you definitely feel like you kind of have to fight for everything that you want or that you need or any sort of injustice. You kind of have to fight or you're not gonna get anywhere. People don't just like give you things because it's the right thing to do. You kind of have to fight and you kind of have to, it all came out to be honest when I was in the Paris airport. If you've ever been in the Paris airport, like the full American Terra has come out and that'll be a story for another time. But less aggressive. Like I just really noticed. Okay. So here's a true story. True story. So I'm out with one of my girlfriends who is the nicest, like legitimately the nicest person you could meet, like way nicer than me. Okay. And she's always been, um, I would say more not aggressive, more of a push pushover than I would have been because she's just so nice. She just thinks that everybody, she thinks the best of everybody. She thinks everybody's intention is good. And it's a really good quality to have. But let me just tell you, when I was in the States and we had some different circumstances where there were some injustices, let me tell you, she stood up and was like, no, no, this is not how this is gonna go down. And I did it. And I struggled with that. I like literally was like embarrassed sometimes that she's even saying, even though she's being very diplomatic and very nice and not like a crazy Karen or anything, but she was just, I was like, oh my gosh, like I am not this person anymore. I used to be that person and I cannot do it. Like, I don't care enough. I can just see like, I can't, I don't want to, I can't be bothered with it. I don't want to bother other people with it. So really interesting how I like, I literally don't think I would have said something and so glad that she did because like it needed to be said and it was just like, you know, I got some money back for some things and it was really good. But I was like, oh my gosh, I am not this person anymore. Number two. And this has been so obvious when I'm with Americans in New Zealand. This is so obvious when I'm in the States is I don't call out for the wait staff anymore. <laughs> so it's very like, it's very non-Kiwi to be like in a cafe or in a restaurant and be like, hey, excuse me, excuse, don't, don't do that. Don't do that when you come here, okay? And so I, <laughs> I like really notice it now. Like when I'm in the US, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. They're doing that and it's uncomfortable for me. Like it's uncomfortable. That would never have been uncomfortable before, but now <laughs> it's quite uncomfortable. Okay, number three, kind of along with number two is awareness of people talking loud. It's so interesting because I have fully become a Kiwi American, fully, because I have definitely still Ameri- I am definitely American, but I have these Kiwi tendencies now where like I'm really noticing people being loud, um, talking really loud, uh, I'm not saying that I don't talk loud, and I do. I probably talk louder than uh, most Kiwis, really. But, like, I'm aware of it now. I'm aware of, like, how loud that sounds or how that's coming across or, you know, I'm just... Hopefully I'm not as loud as I used to be. I think I'm not. So 
hopefully not, but like <laughs> just this whole awareness of people being loud and like, why is this bothering me? Like this never used to bother me. Now it bothers me. All right. Number four, no patience for a crowd. Okay. So I did a lot of fun things, concerts, state fairs, you know, big events all over. You know, I was in Europe, I was in the US, there were crowds of people. And I like have lost any patience for that. <laughs> like, it's like, I'm in like this little crowd and like, all I want to do is get out. Like, this is now immediately not fun. I don't know like how this is going to be fun for me now because it's not. <laughs> do you remember, I mean, like completely spoiled, completely spoiled. My kids are spoiled, everybody's spoiled by like the no crowds here or like, you know, going to a beach where there's like three people on the whole beach, you know, whereas in like the U.S. is packed, everything's packed and Europe is definitely packed and like everything is small and you're just like, oh my gosh, the crowds. Number five, and this one I think is a really good thing. I have learned to relax. I have learned to relax. I am seeing a lot of Americans get really hyper about things that don't matter that get really into like all this, like, oh, you know, this bothers me, or they're getting all dramatic about things that you shouldn't get dramatic about. And so, yeah, like I've learned to relax. In addition to just like relaxing about stupid everyday things, I've also like learned to take holiday. I've learned the importance of taking multiple weeks off at a time, even a month off at a time. I know that that's not practical in the society of the U.S. when you're only getting two weeks and you don't have a lot of control. So I'm not like blaming people in the U.S., but man, I have changed. I have changed my perspective. I will never go back to that. If I get a regular, you know, W-2 paying job, then I will negotiate that in my contract because that is a, that is a, that is not flexible. Like taking a holiday, taking time to like, life is too short, you guys, to be like working all the time to never being able to take off to like, just like work is just your number one thing. It's just not anymore. Like, so I guess that's also how I've changed. Like, it's just not the most important thing. You can see that now and you can see actually how so much the rest of the world functions that way and does just fine. And Americans are like these crazy burnt out, always having to work. You know, you come and visit or, you know, you know, nobody can take time off for you or like they come here and like, they're like, wow, you're really like taking all this time to show us around because yeah, that's what you do. Like life is short, like people matter, you know? And so, yeah, I've learned to relax. I've learned to take time off. There's no overbooking. That's another thing. Like I don't have a problem saying no. I'm not like a full Kiwi and that I think like they're always so like, well, we can't do that or we can't do that or that's too much. No, just being okay with like, all right, it's not going to get done this week or okay, it's it's more important that we slow down or it's more important that you actually take time to heal from being sick uh, before you just jump into the next thing. Or like I just got back from, you know, traveling for weeks and weeks and just just being okay with like, I don't have YouTube videos being posted. It's okay because my life and my family and you know, my mental state and my stress level is more important than the algorithm then that I do what it's telling me to do every week. Like, you know, it just completely changes your mental space. And that has taken a long time. It actually has been a long time in coming for me with eight years. Like I don't adjust. I still have like my American work ethic, but I, yeah, I know how to slow down. Okay. Number six, number six, I hate tipping. I hate it like is gone out of control in the US. You know, if you're in the US, you know what I'm saying. Like I'm literally someone goes into a refrigerator, grabs me a water bottle, puts it down in front of me, flips the screen for a tip for that, for that, for that. And that person, I do not blame that person because I do not think that they're the ones that came up with that idea. But what? Like the tipping, the constant tipping, the constant having to think about it. Like that's so Kiwi of me, isn't it? Like to me as an American, that was so normal. And now it's not normal to me. And I would forget. And the tipping has changed. Like it used to be like 15%, 18%, 20%. Now it starts at 20 or 22 to 27. And so I'm like tipping wrong when I'm there. I even had a waitress, this is a true story, true story. This waitress came up to me and I gave her an 18 or 19%. I, don't, I just gave her the cash that I had. I wasn't doing amazing mental math, but like, but I knew it was high enough, like in my mind, because like the minimum would be 15, 12, 15. And like, but that's not the case anymore. She literally came back and says to me, 
Was there a problem with the service? And I was like, I feel like so bad. Like I didn't no, I didn't, I didn't realize it. Anyway, it was rude. She shouldn't have said that, but I'm not justifying her behavior. But like, I'll also like, man, I just hate all of this. They make good money. I think they make good money doing tips and the service is so much better in the U.S. And so I appreciate that. But like, oh, there has to be some happy medium. There's just too much tipping and tipping for everything. It's like, I've completely lost it. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know the right amount of tipping to do anymore and how to tip and blah, blah, blah. so I'm over it. I've changed. I prefer the no tipping. Guys, number seven, after traveling the world, I have a whole new appreciation for decent healthcare. Okay? Decent healthcare for everybody. Okay? So like you travel the world and like you can get travel insurance and it's reasonable. When you try to get insurance in the US, it's outrageously expensive. And you have to have it because their prices are so outrageous. I can't even get health insurance for my college student because it's so, it's so outrageous. Like it's like unaffordable for like a healthy 19 year old. Like, you know, maybe I haven't figured everything out, but let me just say my perspective has changed in that having a healthcare system that allows decent healthcare for anybody that's living there, even possibly visiting there. I don't know. You could feel differently about different things, but like, and all the reasons. The healthcare is good. Like, I love that you have different options. I love that you have a lot of specialist doctors. I love, you know, all of the things. Like, it's not like, it's just run horribly, you know? And like, the insurance companies are winning in the US. Like, if you see their buildings, they are the nicest buildings in the entire country because they're winning. And the people that need the healthcare is not winning. Okay, number eight. Now, I don't want a million comments about this one, please. Please just hear what I'm saying and not hear what you think I'm saying in your brain, okay? I cannot stand how politics has infiltrated all parts of life in the US. Like people, it's like they can't even think about normal life things, education, ethics, you know, religion, whatever, without infiltrating politics into everything. And it's like, holy cow, like that, it's political. It's not everything, okay? and. Would I say that this has changed? It's changed for me in the sense that it's awareness. It's awareness of how like that's infiltrating everything and like in the country that I'm in, it, it doesn't. There's, we're having an election soon and you know, there's so there's more billboards and there's more talk about it and that makes sense because there's an election. There's not like an election in a year and we're, like we're talking about it two years, three years ahead of time and it's just infiltrating in the news and everything. It's just, it's too much. It's too much. It's, and it's just, it's, it's so annoying. And like, and then like, you can't even talk to people about it. And like, people are so like polarized on each side that you can't even have a decent discussion about anything with people getting mad because they're associating it with, with who they are, with like morals and ethics and all of this. And okay. So some of the issues, you know, hit on that for sure. But like, it's politics. It's over, it's over here. It doesn't define who you are. Okay. So number nine may surprise you. If you don't know, I am a marketing person. So if you need any help with branding, marketing, SEO, I'm the one for you. But with that aside, I have struggled in New Zealand with like, they have so many advertising rules, like some that are really good. Like you can't advertise to children. You can't advertise like pharmaceuticals. You can't like say that you're, you're, you know, healthcare place will, you know, solve any problems. And they actually regulate, like, you can't be high pressure sales. And so at first this was like, wait, what? Like, I thought, mm, not sure about this, but I'm going to say that I've changed my opinion that this, 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 these little bit of regulation around, um, advertising around things that, that just doesn't benefit people. And I think it really comes down to the fear mongering that I really noticed in the U S about everything and people just like afraid of everything and people just like worry about this. And then you have like a suing culture and you have like insurance for everything and everybody's going to take advantage of everybody else. And it's a problem. It's a problem. Like when, when organizations and companies are benefiting more than the society, that's a problem. And you have that in a lot of areas, but like the fear mongering, 
making people fearful of things. This is why they need this insurance, this protection, this, you know, or don't do this. And it, it, it's just like, it's just kind of everywhere. And it's, and it's part of the advertising. It's part of the media. It's part of, you know, how they do things. And so I don't really know how I'm saying all of this, but really it's just like, I think I've, the regulations around like what's appropriate uh, and then, okay, and then you got like the freedom of speech and people don't like regulation. I don't know. You have freedom of speech and like, it's crazy in the US, okay? So I don't know. We just need to have an adult conversation about this and that we shouldn't be putting fear into people's lives, elderly, the children, um, because we want to sell something. I guess that's my point. And number 10, the US does not have it all figured out. <laughs> You know, they are a world power and they have responsibilities and they have way more responsibilities than someone like New Zealand does. <laughs> and I understand the difference. And I have been traveling around Europe. Not a, you know, I haven't been everywhere and I haven't been everywhere in the world. But I'm just saying that for somebody, for a country that has so many resources and so much money and so much power that they're just, boy, you just don't have like some things figured out because we're, we're sitting in this world of like fear and misunderstanding and like, you know, no trust, like there's no trust for leadership there. And so it really affects everything. And so when you go to a different culture and you see how things are done differently and whether you agree with them or not, and they work, it makes you like, eh, what? Like, why are we not doing this? Like, <laughs> it's like, you guys is like, have this perspective, like, oh, we don't want to have like, you know, universal health care, we don't want to have, you know, all or however you want to call it, you know, but like, there's people that are able to have babies for free, I had to pay $30,000. There's people that get a year off, you know, maternity leave, there's people that, you know, in, in a lot of countries, and it's just like, you guys, how do you not have some of this figured out? How are you not open to different ideas, new ideas, um, figuring out, you know, a way to do it where everything benefits? It's just it's too much of society that's not um, laws and things created around the benefit of people, the benefit of the people of the society. It's just, it's actually very obvious when you live and function in a different society and not that New Zealand isn't perfect or Australia or Europe, and it's not, but they have a lot of like basic needs, basic things should be figured out. You know, like you shouldn't be paying 40,000 a year for college, for university. It doesn't even translate anymore. Like it doesn't like adjust, adjust, adjust. Okay, well, I guess that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>